What we're going to be going over here are convertible bonds versus convertible preferred stock and we're going to be calculating the diluted earnings per share here for each of these here. So for our example here we're going to have two cases here. We're going to have a case one here we're going to be dealing with convertible bonds and then our second case here we're going to be dealing with convertible preferred stock. So for, for our convertible bonds here this is where Corporation A issued six million dollars worth of bonds of face value at par here and their six percent interest rate we'll just say on a yearly basis here. Here. There are 10-year bonds here, and they were issued here on 11X1 here at the beginning of the year here, and they have a $1,000 par value each here, and they're convertible into 15 shares here of common stock. So if a bondholder owes a $1,000 bond here, he can convert it into 15 shares of common stock. Now the shares outstanding during the year here, and that's for a year X1 here, we have 200,000 shares here of common stock. Now the net income here for the current year, and we're looking at again year X1 here, is $480,000 and we have a tax rate here of 40% for example here. Now case two, this is where we're going to have convertible preferred stock. Now we're going to assume the same facts here as our convertible bonds except that they're going to be issued here for $2 million worth of preferred stock. They're going to have a 6% dividend rate here and each of these um, preferred stocks are going to be $400 par value each here. So uh, the preferred share convertible um, conversion here you can convert each of these hundred dollar shares here of preferred stock into five shares here of common stock so uh, shareholder owns a hundred dollar here um, par value of preferred stock he can convert it into five shares here of common stock okay so let's go down and let's look first at our diluted earnings per share here for convertible bonds and we're going to be looking at the end of the year here and we're going to make this uh, example simple here because we're going to have issued these uh, convertible bonds and the convertible preferred stock here on 11x1 and we're going to be looking at the end of the year here 1231x1 and what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to calculate it, the diluted earnings per share here for each of these. Okay so starting with our convertible bonds here our general formula is this here we take our net income for the year here then we have to add back our interest we're going to look at why we're doing that here and then we would divide it by the number of shares outstanding here for the years uh, for the year here plus what what is going to be converted here into uh, common stock. The uh, bonds here, they're going to be converted into common stock. Now, we're going to assume that the conversion here for a common stock or a, converted, a conversion of the bonds into common stock at the date that they were issued here. And in this case, they were issued at the beginning of the year here. So we look at the conversion from at the beginning of the year here. So that that's our point point of reference here. Now this is the interest that we're talking about that has to be bad, added back to the net income. Now for the year here the net income included the deduction here for the bond interest that uh, of, for the bond interest say the bond the bonds were outstanding and say they still were outstanding but for our conversion for de de determining the diluted earnings per share here we have to assume that those bonds were converted and we're looking at as of their conversion here at the beginning of the year here. But if that's the case here, then this bond interest here that is uh, re reduced our net income here has to be added back because the bonds would not have would not have been outstanding, so we wouldn't have any bond interest. But it has to be added back net of taxes. Okay, so let's go look at our calculations here. So first, we're going to be looking at this net income that we talked about here. So what we were given for our problem here is that we have uh, net income here after tax, and this is the basic earnings that we have for net income that was four hundred eighty thousand dollars worth now we have to add back this interest on the bonds here net of tax what we want to do is we have to come up with our net income here after tax for the diluted earnings here and that's going to be six hundred ninety six thousand dollars so what we would do here for our interest expense on those bonds so we have our interest expense we had six million dollars worth of bonds paying six percent interest here they were out for the entire year here so that equals three hundred sixty thousand dollars now we have to subtract out the income tax here of forty percent so that'd be a hundred forty four thousand dollars so our bond interest expense net of the tax here two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars so for our diluted earnings we just have to add that interest expense back to uh, what we had here for our basic earnings at four hundred eighty thousand so now we come up with our net income here for diluted earnings here at six hundred ninety six thousand dollars so, okay so going down to our formula here so here's where we're sitting the four hundred eighty thousand dollars worth of net income here 
That was our basic earnings here after tax that's shown here. Now we're adding back that interest here. And that would be this, uh, what we're going to, we're going to be adding back the $216,000 worth here. But for our formula here, all you would do is, instead of going, you don't have to go through all these calculations here. All you do is here, take your bond interest for the year here, 360000 here, times one minus the tax rate. So that's the key here, one minus the tax rate. And I'm just showing this calculation here so you understand it. So what we're doing here, 360 times 1,000 here, uh, interest expense times one minus the tax rate, that would be 60%. So what that really equates to is 216,000 here. So adding our net income plus our adding back our net int our interest here on those bonds net of tax here, 216,000 here, we divide it here. Now is where we come to our delusion. Uh, we have to calculate the additional shares that would be outstanding, common stock shares that would have been issued here and outstanding based on the conversion of those bonds here. And as of the beginning of the year here, we're looking at, so ease our calculations. So what we would do here for our amount of bond uh, common stocks that would be issued for the conversion of those bonds here, we just take, in this case, we had $6 million worth of bonds, $1,000 par each, divide that in, and divided that out here, the par thousand dollar par into our six million dollars and then we're going to get come up with that figure take it times the conversion rate here on those uh, to the common stock so we get for each bond here you can convert it into 15 shares of common stock that equals 90,000 shares here additional common stock that would have to be added in here for this diluted earnings per share so these are the shares that are assumed to be issued those 90,000 shares here and those are the bonds that are converted into common stock based on our conversion here so just dividing everything out here the net income uh, we had here for our basic earnings 480,000 plus that uh, in uh, interest expense here, adding that back here, uh, net of the tax here, $216,000 here, divide that by the, in this case, we had 200,000 shares here for the sh uh, common stock outstanding here for the year, plus the 90,000 here that uh, based on this conversion of our bonds into common stock, divide everything out, you're going to get a diluted earnings per share here of $2.40 per share. Okay, so we've taken care of our diluted earnings here uh, per share here for our convertible bonds. Now let's go over and look at our convertible preferred stock. Okay, again, we're looking at diluted earnings per share here for convertible per stock at the end of the year here, uh, same as for our bonds. So what we're going to do is we go down to our general formula here. So this is a bit different than we had for our bonds. So again, diluted earnings here per share. So we would take our net income, same as we had for the bonds, but here we would be, have to subtract out any preferred stock dividend. So that's the a key that we have to look out here. We have to subtract out any preferred stock dividend. But the key is, in this problem, uh, we wouldn't have any preferred stock dividend here because since those bonds were considered to be converted here at the beginning, or the preferred stock was considered to be uh, converted at the beginning of the year, uh, there wouldn't be been any dividends paid. So the key here is that you'd have a zero dividend because it, again, these preferred stocks were converted into common stock at the end of the at the beginning of the year here. And the other key thing that we have to look at, there's even if let's just say for example there was some preferred stock uh, that would uh, dividends that it would have to be included here, and we're not going to get into that. But nonetheless, here there is when you're dealing with the preferred stock dividends, there's no tax effect if tax effect here because the preferred stock dividend for the most case here and most of the time here it's not tax deductible so you don't have to deal with any taxes here whereas with the bonds we had to add back that interest expense because the bonds were converted into common stock but here we're not dealing with any taxes here regardless uh, and, and for our example here, since the conversion was at the beginning of the year here, preferred stock into common stock, we had no dividends here. But as far as, that's for our numerator here. Now for our denominator here, well, same as we have here for our bonds. We have the number of shares of common stock outstanding plus those converted shares here. And we'll go down and we'll calculate that. Again, let's just make a point here. We assume that the conversion to common stock at the date that it was issued here in 11X1. So that's, that's what we were 
everything was converted here preferred stock into common stock at that date and then assume no dividend was declared and there was a non-cumulative preferred stock here so there wouldn't have been any dividends in arrears here so that's the other fact but the key is here since they whatever preferred stock you converted here you wouldn't be paying any dividend on it now that's in this case it was at the beginning of the year here so we have zero okay so now let's go and let's calculate our diluted earnings per share here on common stock here for well, this is where the preferred stock is converted into common stock as we mentioned here so what we start with our net income here 480,000 same as we had in our bond example here and that's a net income after tax our basic earnings here and that was that is where that's what you're sitting with at net income for the year here now in our example here well we had zero dividends here because it was preferred stock was converted at the beginning of the year into common stock so there is no dividends on it but then we come and we divide it by the in this case we'll do our calculation here for the determine our extra shares that uh, based on this preferred stock uh, conversion here. So again, we sat here with the 200,000 shares here, common stock, same as we had with the bonds, but now for our preferred stock conversion. So here you just take, well, we had $2 million of preferred stock and it was $100 per share here, par amount. So divide that out. You take it times the conversion rate. In this case, we had five shares of um, preferred stock here converted or what you would get for one share of preferred stock here, you're going to get five shares of common stock. So multiplying that out, you're going to come up with 100,000 extra shares here of common stock after the conversion. Now, these are the shares assumed to be issued here. So again, preferred stock converted into common stock. So here's our denominator. 200,000 here that were outstanding for the year here, plus the 100,000 uh, shares here that were a preferred stock converted into common stock divide that by the net income here for the year of 480,000 and you're going to come up with one dollar and sixty cents per share here diluted earnings per share okay so we really went through both of these um, both for our bonds and our convertible bonds here and convertible preferred stock but let's just go back up to so we understand this again here and when we're making the distinction here be between convertible bonds here and convertible preferred stock. We always start with our net income here, but when we're dealing with the uh, convertible preferred stock here, we would be subtracting out the preferred stock dividend. But in our example here, since we've converted it at the beginning of the year here into common stock, there wouldn't have been any preferred stock outstanding, so uh, we would have a we wouldn't have any dividends here on a preferred stock and then for example we did assume that there were no dividends declared for the year here and there was a non-cumulative preferred stock so our example was just zero here so that's what you have to deal with when you're dealing with the preferred stock you have to determine what that preferred stock dividend is here and if in that's what you'd have you'd have to subtract that off from net income our example it's zero here but then when we come down to our uh, ratio our new denominator down here you have to also determine the number of shares that are outstanding and then you have to determine what is converted here uh, into common stock and we have to do that same here for the bonds here and the preferred stock so the other thing is to note here when we're dealing with the bonds here we had a tax effect that we had to consider here where we had to add it back to the net income because it was initially reduced the net income here for the bond uh, for the bond interest expense here but because they were converted there was no bond interest expense so we had to add it back but he had to add it back here uh, based on the uh, after tax basis here net of tax and just when you're dealing with these um, preferred stock uh, preferred stocks here the dividend here there is really no tax effect here regardless what you're dealing with when you're talking about preferred stock there is generally no, it's not tax deductible so there is no tax effect but ha if there was some then you'd have to take if there was some tax deductibility on it then you'd have to take it into consideration just as we did here with the uh, bonds here but in this case we made uh, there were zero dividends here because they were converted into common stock here at the beginning of the year okay so that takes care of our example here looking at the difference between our convertible bonds versus our convertible preferred stock when we're calculating this diluted earnings per share for each of these